Okay, I just want to end by stressing the point that it's really up to you guys to invent ways of combining all these techniques. Um, all the rendering techniques that we've covered, the line drawing techniques, the Photoshop techniques, and finally all the 3D Studio Max um, techniques. It's a very complex bit of software, but I think in those complexities you can find a lot of opportunities and a lot of room to move. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish up by using a couple of bits of software to generate a, a tonal drawing, or a tonal um, a plan with shadow, which is an old drawing technique, which I'm sure if you've read Ching you'll come across, uh, where we can start to get a little bit more depth in our plans by by casting a shadow on the plan. Okay, so let, let's start off, just have a look at this scene that I've created. Set up a, a little camera, an aerial camera. I've got my sun system, which we know how to create now. I've set the softness a little bit higher. And I've just had uh, put into the scene a geodesic dome. Okay, so I've made it uh, faceted. I've also um, put a, another geodesic dome over the top with a lattice, so it starts to really highlight those edges. That sits on a plinth, which sits on a ground plane that I've created. As far as the rendering settings that I'm using, just bringing up the environment and effects dialog, hitting eight. Uh, I've played around a little bit with the image control just to bring out some of the um, mid-tones by dimming the highlights and I've upped the, the darker shadows a little bit. Uh, you can also change some of these colours, so I might make the image just a little bit warmer as well. So, I've done all this. I can hit render and I can generate an image. And It's probably a little bit washed out still, but it'll give me something to work with. I'm not going to uh, make it a little bit more precise, but just recall that you can actually up that you can up your final gather and it makes the image a lot crisper. And the other thing that I've done here is I've just rendered it 640 by 480 which is way too low for print resolution but for the purpose of the exercise that I'm going to show you I'll keep it like that. So I'm just going to save that to a file and open up in Photoshop and further enhance that. Okay so we've got the image now in Photoshop and um, the other thing I used while I was in the other bit of software was um, a material, again a plastic, a matte finish, so there's not too much reflection. Now in here, know that any image that you kind of work with, you can get to a particular level in 3D Studio Max, but most of the time you'll need to apply some After Effect. So open up some brightness and contrast settings in Photoshop before you use it. And who knows, you might actually print this and sketch it and make some kind of composite drawing for yourself. Okay. So right now I'm just playing around with the levels to kind of bring the object out a little bit. Oops. Just do that again. Like so. Alright. So I could have brought my highlight, my uh, shadow profiles up a little bit and, and my midtones up a little tiny bit more. You can see that the image isn't very crisp. Um, if I had upped my precision and my final gather it would have been a lot crisper. And the resolution of course. But it's okay for now. So I'm just going to save that. Now, getting back to these kind of shaded um, uh, plan drawings. This is the great thing about the slice and using a sun system at the same time is that, uh, and I've already applied it, um, what I can do is set this slice to a particular height, right, just like that. Zoom in on a plan. Now also if I know where that slice is I can apply the section tool at the height as well and I'll have a vector line that I can set in AutoCAD as a reference. So I hope, I hope you know and, and explore those kind of things together. So let's say we go to that height and we hit render. Okay so you can see what I've been able to do very very quickly and although not accurate in scale because I'm generating a JPEG is um, create kind of a, sh a, a really elaborate shadow, um, shadowed plan. Okay, now a few things that I'm going to do here. I'm just going to go back in here and I'll drop the the white point back to 6500 to make it a whiter image. And for the plan, what I'm going to do is I will set this just to a slightly higher pixel ratio, and I will bring the precision up just to make it a little bit crisper. 
Okay, you can see it's a lot whiter. It's back to its more neutral um, material color as it renders, um, and you know that that's just by taking down the the hot the hot spot. All right. So what I could do with this image is I could print it, and I could actually trace by hand these very accurate um, uh, cast shadows. And if I had other geometry on here as well. Um, such as a tower or whatever, I think with a box throwing a shadow it's probably a really handy one to actually show you. And I won't apply the, the plan cut to this, but let's just say I'll move this over to here and make this just a little bit bigger, this plane, and I'll apply material to it. like so. Go back to top view and render it off and I'll come back to you just to show you that. You can see that we've rendered um, the tower which is uh, about 35 meters in height and we've also been able to uh, generate some really nice shadow work that kind of fades and deteriorates the further away it becomes. If it was an actual true plan this thing would be cut at the same height as this, but I've just put it in as a de demonstration. Uh, we can save that as kind of a, I guess the plan 02. Save it as a TIFF, because I don't want any compression on it at the moment. I can then, I could print this, I could trace it as I say. I could uh, use my hand drawing techniques that are very neat over the top of it if I wanted to. And um, what I can do is also take it into Photoshop and make it really, really high contrast so that we eliminate all the little um, additional line work and generate just a, line, a, a, a really crisp, high contrast shadow drawing. Okay, so that might be a technique that you apply underneath your CAD work, for example. Okay, and there's, if you actually did it at high resolution, you can see if we keep it at color, you can also pick up some really nice uh, spectral colors, you know kind of a yellow band that's sitting in there and then what we can do is we could also crop this image uh, comp and, and elaborate on our compositional uh, our composition of the plan in such a way the best thing about Photoshop and this little crop tool is that it gives us a rule of thirds a little third grid over the top that we could align some of these um, objects to so let's say right on the very center point of this we can set our um, circle and then on this third here I'm setting this building that will kind of feed into it like that so that might be an interesting thing and then of course we give a little bit more hierarchy to this portion of the page which you may then further design something but anyway it's a, it's a start point I guess the design matter is not important it's more the technique that I actually want to be able to show you and of course if this is a PSD document I can take that PSD document into InDesign and I'll have a layout that will be ready for me to print on on the last day I can then come back in here uh, re-render it take it back into Photoshop rescale it etc etc and the workflow continues I could uh, reference that file into AutoCAD and then I could um, underlay it in order from order I could sorry excuse me I could generate uh, two-dimensional line drawings over and over from um, AutoCAD that I can put under this PSD document all right so that sums up the lecture series and hopefully there's a few things that you can um, take with you so um, yeah